I'm Father Frankie Mulgrew. What's it like hearing confessions? A few years ago, I got a taxi in Ireland to take me to a nearby Catholic church so we could say Mass. And during this taxi ride, this journey, me and the taxi driver talked about all kinds of issues, but not faith related. Sport, the weather. He pulls up outside the Catholic church. I open the door, I've got one foot on the pavement, the tarmac, and one foot inside the taxi. And as I go to leave, I say, oh, by the way, I'm gonna pray for you today during mass. And the taxi driver turned around and said, Father, how do you know if you've been forgiven? Father, how do you know if you've been forgiven? I got back in the taxi and we had a conversation about God's unconditional love that just even St. Paul, in all his knowledge of God, couldn't quite get to the width, the breadth, the height, the depth of it. And that God's mercy is just so unconditional. He's just so full of mercy. He's just waiting for us to say sorry and he's going to come and dish out all his mercy and love. Well, at the end of this conversation, the taxi driver turned to me and he said, Father, will you hear my confession? Father, will you hear my confession? And I said to this taxi driver, certainly, but just turn off the meter, otherwise it's gonna cost me a fortune. Not quite, not quite, but no, I did. I heard his confession. You know, here's the thing. At the end of it, he was very moved. And I wondered if he woke up that morning and realized that God's mercy was about to impact his life. When he picked up that taxi fare, whether he realized that God was gonna come down on him that day and dish out all his love and mercy. What's it like hearing confessions? It's amazing, it's miraculous, it's beautiful, it's humbling. But you know what? It's not quite as amazing as when I go to confession myself and I receive that mercy for myself. You know, one of the main reasons why I'm a priest is probably because of that sacrament. I went through a particularly bad patch a few years ago with depression. I tell you, I tell you how bad my depression was. I used to watch episodes of EastEnders as an antidepressant. That's pretty bad. But during the height of these mental health issues, I met a young priest and I shared with him about my pain and my struggle. And he said, you should come to confession. And I was like, nah, it's the last thing I wanted to do. But I thought about it and I thought I got nothing to lose and everything to gain. I didn't know it then, but I, I know it now. It ended up being one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. And so I went to confession this day and of course, we get confession from Jesus. After his resurrection from the dead, he breathes in his apostles and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And he gives them that power and authority to forgive sins. Like we have a fancy Latin word of what a priest is in the Catholic Church, in persona Christi, in the place of Christ. And so this day when I went to confession, I thought if I'm doing it, I'm doing it right. I'm getting rid of everything that's on my heart. And at the end of this confession, the priest put his hand over my head, but it wasn't his hand, it was Christ's hand. And when he said the words of forgiveness, the words of absolution, I felt this incredible breeze of heat literally rip through me interiorly. Like I never felt so much peace and so much love. And I knew that God was real, and I knew that he'd forgiven me. You know, I go to confession regularly, not because I'm a bad person, but I want to be a better person. It's like there's a, a CFR friar, a priest called Father Bernard Murphy, who talks about heaven and hell are both full of sinners. If the only difference is people in heaven chose to give their sins to Christ. And that's what I do regularly. I hand over my brokenness, my darkness, my weakness, and I see God transform it in his love and his life. You know, it's a bit like this. Imagine if you go to the doctor, but you say to the doctor, I'm really sick, doctor, I'm really ill. And he's like, well, what exactly is the problem? And you're like, mm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about Pacific. A doctor cannot treat a disease that you deny that you have. In the same way, God can't come into your life and transform you into a better person if you deny weaknesses that you have and you don't hand them over to him. You know, uh, my best friend when he was growing up, he was only a small kid and he got a thorn stuck in his finger. And he refused to show his mummy's finger with his forming because he thought she'd pull it out. Ah, it'd be in so much pain, there'd be blood everywhere. So he hides his finger with the forming for like three days. After three days, he's in that much pain. He has to show his mum. Right away, she pulls it out and he feels better. The healing process starts. But imagine if he kept that fawn in his finger for weeks or months or even years. What effect would that have had on him? That's what we can do with unrepented sins. We can almost like, there can be thorns in our heart and all God wants to do is confession. He just reach in and pluck them out. He wants you to be free. You deserve that freedom because he loves you so much. You know, I once asked a holy person, is there anything that cannot be forgiven? And he said, yes, one thing. And I was like, what? And he said, that's the sin of believing that nothing can be forgiven. Think about it. 
We have to accept the mercy. We have to invite the mercy. And listen, God is merciful. So here's the thing, and the amazing thing. When you go to confession, and you're as upfront and honest with the priest about your sins, when he places his hand over your head, it's Christ's hand, but in that moment when he gives you absolution and forgiveness, your soul becomes as pure, as white, as beautiful, and as ready for heaven as the day it was in the day of its baptism. Wow. What's it like hearing confessions? It's out of this world. Here are the questions.